In section 11.1, we're going to be working with proportions for two populations rather than for means for two populations. Now, keep in mind, we still have to understand the difference between independent and dependent sampling. So independent sampling is when the individuals selected for one sample do not dictate or have a relationship with the individuals in the second sample. Dependent sampling, also known as matched pair sampling, is when the individuals selected in one sample do determine the individuals in the second sample. So for example, husbands and wives, brothers and sisters, that kind of thing. Or better yet, pre-test, post-test. So it's, it's one person matched against themselves. And that happens with proportions. If I ask you one question, then I ask you another question. That's a dependent sample because you're being measured against yourself. Whereas an independent sample is when it's two groups that are measured once. All right, so we're going to determine whether the following sampling methods are independent or dependent, then determine whether the response variable is qualitative or quantitative. We conduct a survey of 100 random men and 100 random women to find out which was their favorite summer Olympic sport to watch on TV. So the, this is independent, right? The, these two groups have no bearing on each other. They're just 100 random men and women. If they were husbands and wives, that would be different. They, then they'd be dependent. But they're not husbands and wives. So you're going to stick with independent. That's two group of people that are asked one time. And you want to see, do men and women like different things? Do they watch different sports? One might imagine that they do. This is a qualitative variable here because you're asking them, what's your favorite sport to watch? You know, well, this is the summertime, so gymnastics or swimming or track or whatever. All right, then the hypothesis test is for proportions then. If you're doing qualitative variables, it's for proportions. Quantitative is for means. All right, now what about we conduct a poll of 100 random men and 100 ram random women to find out whether they like watching the Olympics on TV or not. We first call them the day before the games start. Then we uh, conduct a follow-up call the day after the Olympics end. Well, that would be dependent. You're asking them once at the beginning, what's your favorite sport? And then at the end, so they start off thinking, I'm going to like swimming, and they actually didn't like it at all, and they loved the kayaking or whatever. So again, it's a variable is your favorite sport to watch, and that hypothesis test would be for proportions. Now, because I wanted to add in a quick review of the other kinds that we've seen, because we're getting close to the end of the chapter, so we're going to have to put it all together. I added these couple ones right here. So I have a researcher wants to know if basketball or soccer players soccer players way more. A random sample of male college basketball players and a random sample of male of male college soccer players were obtained and then the results were compared. Oh, compa obtained and weighed, then the results were compared. Well, that would be weighing first of all. So like how much do you weigh? That's a quantitative variable. And they're independent of each other. These are random samples of you know, soccer and basketball players, they're not going to have any bearing on each other. So this would be independent. And your variable is quantitative, it's weight. And the unit would be pounds. Um, that's also kind of a usual sign that you have uh, quantitative variables if it has a unit to go with it. Um, whereas qualitative variables generally don't. What's your favorite sport? It doesn't really have a unit, it just is. Right? Now this is two groups of players and you measure them one time. Put all the soccer ball or soccer soccer ball soccer players on a scale. Measure them. All the basketball players on a scale. Measure them. You're done. And you're just going to compare the two of them. That's a hypothesis test for independent means. That's section 11.2, 11.3. Excuse me. To move that over. All right. Now, what about the next one? A researcher has um, collected the heart or data showing the heart rate beats per minute for a random sample of coffee drinkers before and 15 minutes after they drank their coffee. Well, that's classic dependent. It's a before and after, right? So you have one group of, not players, one group of drinkers, coffee drinkers, coffee lovers, and you measure them twice. You measure them before the coffee and you measure them after the coffee. And that means your variable would be your heart rate which again has units, so that's kind of a sign that this is quantitative. BPM, beats per minute. And then the hypothesis test you'd be doing then is a paired means test, which we learned about in section 11.2. Just a little reminder. So these two we've done before, 11.2 and 11.3. This one's the paired t-test. This one's the two-samp t-test. 
And now in section 11.1, we're going to work on the proportions test, which is this section. All right, we'll stop right there, and then we'll pick up on the next video with actually conducting that test for independent proportions.